Right, today I want to show you how I made the backing papers for this card. So obviously I've added a, a butterfly, but I made an A4 sheet for backing papers. And I made these three cards using those backing papers. Yeah, this is the last one. Now there's different ways you can do this, but I used a stencil and some stamps and some distress inks. So I'm going to show you how I've done that. I've taken a nice smooth piece of A4 card and this is actually a Paper Mill Direct smooth white card stock. Really nice and smooth. So it's really good for doing this sort of thing on. You need to make sure that your mat doesn't have any lumps and bumps on it otherwise that will show through when you do the inking. The best thing to do is to get an old magazine to put underneath just so that you have got something so it's nice and smooth. Here's a nice magazine to put underneath. You'd also need <coughs> some stamps. I've chosen this set which has all sorts of bits and bobs on it. You don't want anything too big and you also don't want anything too small. I did use this stamp and the butterfly and the um, honeycomb for the last one. But this time around I'm going to use the honeycomb, the butterfly and the flower. And I've also got a little um, foliage one there as well. So I'm going to use those. Um, now you can, if you want to, apply distress inks straight on. You want to choose, I would say, probably about three distress inks that kind of go well together. I'm using Chip Sapphire, Bundled Sage, and Victorian Velvet. Now, when I chose these, I really didn't know if they were going to work or not. But as it turned out, they did. You'll also need blending brushes or some kind of sponge. I'm going to be using these makeup sponges. Um, I usually try and stick to one colour per sponge, but I've gone off piece with these. But anyway, I'm hoping they'll be, they should be fine. They're not giving off a lot of extra ink because I've given them a good clean. Well, I've given them as good clean as they're going to get. Um, so I'm going to be using those. Um, so you can, if you want to, just start. You can also use um, stencil brushes as well. That's another way of applying ink. So you can start by just applying the ink straight on to your page. I prefer to use a stencil. So I'm just using this um, sort of trellis type stencil. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it on. I'm also going to put my messy mat underneath just in case I go off the page. I don't want to get it on my on my purple mat. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the lightest colour first, the Victorian Velvet, and then I'm just going to start by just gently inking up parts of my page. So I'm going to do a little bit at a time, and I'm just going to zigzag my way across the page. So that's what I'm going to do with the pink. So 
You then just need to make sure you wipe your stencil clean. If you want to, you can attach your stencil with a washi tape each time you put it down. But I just think that's a bit time consuming. So as you can see, it looks a bit splodgy at the moment, but it will come together. Right, so next I'm going to move on to the bundled sage. And I'm going to do it again. Just going to make sure my stencil is nice and dry. Now obviously where the two colours overlap, this is why you need colours that are going to go together. And I'm only going into, I'm not going all the way into the pink, I'm just going a little way into the pink. And now I'm going to go through again and fill in all the gaps with the chip sapphire. There we go. So that's my this um, stenciled paper done. Now there are slight gaps, like white bits. They're not major white bits, they are, but they are sort of white. But that's fine because we're going to be putting stamps in a minute. So I'm not too bothered about that. Right. So now I'm going to take a stamping block. I appear to have lost my stamping block. So now I'm going to take my stamping block and I'm just going to stamp, um, ink up one of the stamps. I'm going to use the honeycomb one first. And I'm going to go in with the bundled sage and ink the stamp up directly. And then I'm just going to go ahead and stamp it. Now the image doesn't come out perfectly, but that's because you're using distress inks. And that's fine because you're not going for an exact image. You want, you know, you want a bit of a distressed look to it. Now bear in mind as well how small you're going to cut your card down to. So with the card I made, the background paper I made for those other cards, I did um, I did use a very large greeting that said you don't look a day over fabulous. But then that did mean that when I came to cut it down I had kind of had to use those long thin cards otherwise I would have cut my greeting in half. So you just need to bear that in mind when you're choosing your stamps. Now we can do one more and then we're going to switch to a different stamp. There we 
go. Right. Now I'm going to switch to the. Actually, let's do the the foliage one while I've got the green out, and I'm going to do the foliage in green as well. And that one's really coming out very, um, very distressy. It's really not printing at all well. But again, that's fine because that's kind of the image, kind of the look we're going for. Because this is a background paper after all. You're not stamping a topper. So you don't want to go too bold with your colours and you don't want to go too bold with your stamping because it is a background. Right, I'm going to switch colours now. So I'm going to go for the, the flower. And I'm going to stamp that in Victorian velvet. And again, I don't know if you can see, that's really quite blotchy. But that's because we're using distress inks and that is what they do. So that will do for the flower and now we're going to go in with the butterfly and as you can tell I've done them all quite randomly they don't show up that well it doesn't look that you can't really see them that clearly on the video or not from what I can see but in real life they look it looks quite good right so we're now going to go in with the butterfly and for the butterfly I'm going to use chip sapphire As you can see it's quite a dark butterfly if you want you can make it less by stamping your ink pad onto some acetate and then using your stamp and stamping onto the acetate to pick up the ink and then going that way you will have a, um, a less bold stamped image but I don't mind the dark blue butterfly It's also quite good to stamp off the page, like I have done there in that corner. Because obviously when you get a background paper, you do have oh, things stamped off the page. Um, Right, I think that's almost done. Um, there we go. So that's my finished background paper. And so I shall be making a card with that later.
But I just wanted to show you the technique so that you can have a go for yourself. Have fun. <laughs>